Welcome, Welcome back, back to HBO, HBO Girls, Girls Rewatch. I'm Amelia. And I'm Evan. And oh my god, how are you, girl? Good. Um, sometimes when you forget you didn't go outside all day, you have to like stand outside in the sun for about five minutes and just like let it shine on your face. Wait, this is so a uh, part of my story. Wait, I thought you were gonna say Broad City, so I was, my all my thoughts went to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like <laughs> so the Lana make, Sad Lamp episode. Yeah, Lana Sad Lamp Tin Foil. And ball. we both famously read Abby Jacobson's book where she talks about how she was really sad that day because she had just gone through a breakup and was like crying on the other side of the closet, the sad lamp. <laughs> and like it is stolen valor to say I read it because I did audio book it. And by the way, I think um, somebody got me a paper copy and then I went and used an Audible subs- like free trial to then listen to it instead. I, my thing about free trials is it's you can make unlimited accounts for free. So if you have a will, you could actually have every single account you want for free. If, if, you, just you, kind of if you can remember, month. if you can remember the password to like a thirty Gmail accounts, you can rule the world. You could rule the world. You would never have to pay for Netflix, Hulu, HBO yeah. Max ever again. I know. Um, what are we doing today? We're covering season five, episode two, Good Man. Good Man, which is actually from a deleted scene. Oh, um, we both watched the bonus features <laughs> this week. <laughs> um. Oh my God. I'm. This episode is like quintessential. Like. Um. It's the boys. I don't know if it's quintessential boys, you think? Well, it's just, it's definitely boys more than girls because Hannah and Jess are the only girls in it. I would say it's gay more than anything. It's definitely a for the gays. It's the queerest episode, or I would say it's a gay, it's the queerest episode we have of HBO Girls. I think it is the gayest episode. Other than episode the accident, this so is the far. queerest episode. <laughs> um Today is a huge day. Today we're recording this and our Zasha app came out, so we're feeling a little random. Oh, again, that's stolen valor because um, I'm not sometimes feeling random. I'm always feeling random. And I don't think I could use the word valor in a sentence correctly. No, try. Um, Stolen valor. Uh, You stole my valor. I guess if you go really literal with anything, you could use any word you want in any sentence. Valor would be like a sick name for a daughter that goes to private school. Oh. <gasps> Oh, my God. I would send her to the school that Hannah teaches at and give her Starbucks every day. Oh, my God. The eighth grader in the episode. But we can't get into the episode now. Let's talk about ourselves for four minutes. I'm like, no. Actually, sometimes we're like, we want to just talk about ourselves. Sometimes I'm just like, I want to talk about girls. I know. I'm in such a girl's mood today because um, I don't want to internalize. Um, the only thing is, is, I guess, what has happened? What's happened? We just we just threw a house party this past weekend. Oh, yeah. We threw a house party. Um, the way our apartment works, it's actually more of a house. We actually had the first house party ever in Brooklyn because we actually live in a house compared to an apartment. And you know what? We were scared too many people were going to come. But then because there's so many like weird <laughs> our little... Our house is so big. That there's actually no There's worries. so many little spots tucked away throughout the place <laughs> that it's like even though it was packed, it was feeling empty. Right. Except it's, for that 45 minute part. Except for that 45 minute part. And if you have a backyard, you can be anywhere and you can have anything. What? We have a backyard so we can be anywhere and be anything. No, our backyard's crazy because there's like three fourths the way down. There's a scary shrub and random tree. And then behind that. I'm like, it's perfectly manicured the shrub. It's almost a perfect circle. So for you to call it scary, you're giving it stolen valor. I think it's just scary for a shrub to be right there, especially since there's like a marble like square. Yeah, there is one court square in the middle. But I also I have, have to, just... to say that just having in brooklyn to have a shrub is scary so it's like even i get what you mean the concept of shrubbery in brooklyn is a concept what? that is terrifying what is the marble square about i think we're brushing over that it's no like, no no i know exactly why i've never seen that it's because it life. matches um what we have in our kitchen so famously you always order more quartz or granite or whatever you need then you actually uh, then you you always and then order you and bury then you, it and then you kind of put that one slab somewhere random in your house so it's like either it's on a coffee table it's on a bookshelf it's in your backyard like ours just happens to be in the backyard but you can put that slab anywhere anyone who has like a marble or something in your house you know you have a few tiles lying around somewhere of that same exact um, mineral rock um just doing something random you're really talking about this like it's the truth and it is it's my story and it's so many other stories i've seen why have i never seen marble slab in backyard before me because i'm sure your parents put it in their bedroom oh god so it's just <laughs> a place you never access 
okay i again i'm sure like, if you ask your parents they'll let you know this tale and i'm like i don't know if this is rooted in truth it is it's full truth okay well that's amazing um on that perfect note unless your contractor is really really talented and is so good at measurements and would never make a mistake but most contractors all love in my heart can sometimes make a mistake Wait, can I just say I couldn't fall asleep last night? So I was, of course, watching Gilmore Girls and Luke is like redoing his upstairs. And that guy, the one guy that's like the contractor guy that we see a bunch later on when Lorelai's opening the end. Taylor? No, no. But he's kind of Taylor, not Taylor. I know what you're talking about because Lorelai gives him a big hug one time and goes, you're so hot because um, he she didn't have any money for him. And he's like, just compliment me around the boys. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, anyways, actually, this is a, I lost all steam. Um, but anyways, like lost all the stealing. What? <laughs> the ceiling falls and Jess <laughs> you come back to your umbrella. <laughs> and what was even the point? <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Uh, contractors are awesome, and I love the way they're represented on the screen. I wish you guys could hang out with Amelia for a day because you can hear her um, bring up Gilmore G- Girls once a day. I actually think I brought it up so many times on the pod already that people are already like, "Yeah." It's a ninth most watched show ever. Really? Uh huh. I saw a listicle. Our guest this week is Iris Apatow. Eee! Amelia and I both fell in love with them with a TV show called Love. Um, it's a show that brought me and my dad together as a unit. Uh, and it's a show that made me enter the podcast yeah, workforce. Yeah, so we both have amazing emotional stories from this. I'd actually say this podcast wouldn't exist without this show <laughs> determining my hard skills that I would learn in college. Yeah, literally. I was like, um, I tried to get my dad to be emotional available for a course of three years while watching this show. Yeah, but um, they, they've been interacting with like our account for a while, so we were so excited when they said they'd be on the pod. There's so much power in an Instagram DM. I know. Nobody talks about it. No. Why is no one talking about it? It is the most powerful unit that we have on this whole earth next to like nuclear power. Instagram DM is one of the most universally um, destructive or most creative things we have. Yeah, I think it's good and bad, like many things. Um, but we're so excited <laughs> to talk to Iris. We're going to cross dissolve to her right now. Woo! I know what my voice sounds like. So to have it parroted it back to me isn't and people comment on like that's a crazy voice i'm like yeah it kind of is a crazy voice i like your voice thank you so much i feel like i i've always been insecure about my voice because i used to have like a really intense uptone and like when i talked because i grew up in la right and i had to like really like tone it down tone it down because it sounds ridiculous <laughs> yeah people are always commenting like why are you talking like that girl and i'm like Listen, how did you develop that living in texas i don't know but people are like oh you must be from the valley and i'm like and i am from texas somehow <laughs> it happens it anyone. happens it's from my sister my sister always talked in a certain way and i was like i will copy you yeah i think it's cool to talk that way though they go up at the end it's like okay I know, have but fun it's with not, language it's not cute if you're like in like Paris and then you're talking like this really loud yeah (laughs) and they're like shut up please no you have to own it I'm like trying to sound chic and and polite and proper (laughs) whoa whoa Whoa. do you think vocal fry could be chic um I I do I can't I don't want to say no because I feel like it's such a common (laughs) thing that it's like offending 50% of people I do, depending how intense it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially this, like, if they have a podcast. Right. Like, right. Like, I feel like they should be aware of that and just, like, keep the like, Keep it a little farther <laughs> down. Just, just a tad. <laughs> give, it some, give it some space. So. Yeah. Well, like, for me, it's a flavor of life. When someone can do a little crazy things with their voice, I'm like, you got, you're you actually, for one time in your life, actually doing something um, different and brave. And I love that. <laughs> Thinking outside the box. Thinking outside your voice with everything. Okay, let me make sure everything's level. I don't know what to do, but I like to look so I can support my friend Amelia. I'm like, that looks level. I'm so bad with technical stuff and I... And in film production, you school. shouldn't have to. Are yeah. you're in school for film now? Yeah, I'm on a, a semester off, but I am in I am in film production at USC. Cute. Are you feel like you're learning things in college? I do. I think it's a really like I feel like the what I've 
I don't know. It's a lot of like just actually doing it, making a lot of shorts and just practicing, like collaborating with other people in your class, which is terrifying and Mm. humiliating at certain points because like you have to screen your shorts and to everyone and they will rip it apart. And they're judging so hard. Oh, and they're ready to go. Like it is no joke. So I, I, it's tough. Like they really, you get, you know, it's like exposure therapy, Whoa. right? Humiliation. <laughs> You're training. <laughs> it's it's great though. I I I just it's it's tough for sure. It's tough, but it's definitely I'm like I was so uh, excited to get into college, and then I got there and I was like, how do you make friends? Like how do you yeah. do right. this unless you're in Greek life? You can't. Like there's it's yeah really they're like join difficult. us already or be alone you're like okay <laughs> <laughs> just be alone you'll be fine like if you do stay in a dorm you're screwed so i i was like trying to find different ways to socialize and they were like you in freshman year they were like there's a lot of 18 and up clubs you can head by and they're pretty sick. They've got some good crowds. They're, they're like, our friend Trent's playing at the oh 18 and Wait, up club. When you did that voice, I got a little scared. Yeah, I was no, like, I'm talking to a frat brother right now. Oh, I, that was scary. All the frat, my ex-boyfriend used to live in a house filled with nine frat boys. And I would walk in and there would be like boys on the floor, like, <gasps> with a toothbrush cleaning the floor they're like oh. pledges oh really and i would be like please get <laughs> up and go and home go home you this- don't have to live like this i know it was so gross the frat boys live really gross i'm taking my earrings out because i can hear them yeah. banging against something. <laughs> no that's no they're way to so live they're so gorgeous though mess up the audio in any way no 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 that won't affect any and i like i think having one earring is really important because it's a queer it's a gay episode <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad i'm representing it was, yeah, it was perfect okay you want to dive in iris hi oh my god this is the best day of our lives it's the best day of my life too we are oh my so god happy to have you here i am too i i love this podcast i've followed you guys the whole time that you've had, I know you've been with us from alive. the beginning. Because I like that you post clips from girls. Like I feel like uh, those are, uh, there's not many accounts that like consistently post on it. I'm like, right. I need can I give this. credit to Amelia? Because she has I, one iMac in her room, and she's spending hours going through every episode, and then taking the episode clipping like taking that clip and then she'll move the camera over so she can get the people's face in frame it doesn't do it by itself she has to manually do all that that's awesome so and she's it's, so talented and you the best stuff it makes me so happy oh thank Aww. you i do it for you oh, <laughs> I, I feel it I yeah feel it's really a for you, you page oh, it really is. yeah <laughs> i love it oh LOL. i love it well we have to know our our first question we always ask this for is, us this is a huge question too Where, and i actually have oh. a little guess in my head before we even ask but I'm gonna. I'll say it after. Okay. But I would love. Okay, ready? No, no, no. First question. Oh, sorry. Where were, where you, were you when, when girls, girls came out? out? Sorry, I, I got so excited. Where was I? I was uh, like, where? Like, what location I was like, in? Like, what were you up to? What was I up to in 2012? 2012. How old was I in 2012? Um, <laughs> literally, how old was I? I can't do the math. Wait, of your 21, 21 now. I was in third grade the perfect you, age to watch are you 2002 mm-hmm. okay so then you were 22 no <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was 22 10. 10 i was 10 <laughs> um so what did, what was i doing i was in uh fourth grade i believe i wasn't really uh watching it but right. I, That's so kind I, of your def- parents. I i yeah no it definitely i was hearing about it right and i knew that it was it was uh very special and everybody was super excited about it but i didn't uh start watching it until i was 14 and i like had met lena and like she was like i really idolized her uh-huh. and always wanted to be a writer so i started watching it when i was 14 which is a strange age it's still way too young <laughs> it's way too young and i didn't fully understand any of it but i thought it I, for some reason i always felt better after watching it like it's just such a comfort with every mistake i make there's a bigger one yeah <laughs> you're like she actually is doing something much worse i know so <laughs> it makes you feel happy like in the end it's it's all worth it to have those experiences mm. so i didn't get to 
exp- you know, have it in the moment. But I've watched it like four times. Like the last watch, I felt like, oh, now I understand. Yeah. Wait, what was your most recent watch? Um, the clips through the TikTok. <laughs> that and like, uh, I watch. I watch it. I watch it to go to sleep. So I mm. probably watched it started like three months ago, and I just slowly rewatch it. And I'm right. like, I really Beautiful. fully like love it in a new way now that it because it kind of does feel different every time. Yeah, it definitely does. Like I first watched it when I was like 19 or 20, and now rewatching it, I'm like, everything is hitting so much more intensely. It's so <laughs> it's so, I, w- I maybe you posted this clip, but it's like. Hannah's mom saying about Adam, like, you don't want to spend your life socializing an odd man. Mm. And that, yeah. I was like, <gasps> that's like, the it, it, oh, God, I just, that's something I've been thinking about so much. There's just little quotes that, like, apply to almost everything, everything which I is know. such a rare thing. I'm loving you falling asleep to the show because it's like your dad writing little lullabies for you. Yeah. Making little <laughs> lullabies. <laughs> oh, I never so thought beautiful. about it like that. Yeah, I, it is, it is very, I'm and I'm it's probably my favorite thing by oh. far. So great. Like just I I'm happy that someone I know got to be a part of that yeah, in of any course. way. Because it's special. It's really, yeah. It's like I love sex in the city too. So I was like excited to get another taste of that. I'm oh my like, god. I know. We're begging for the next one. We're like, where are we at? New York City. We, we have need another just like that. So we need something for girls. Did you watch it in just Oh my god! Evan loves to watch. I'm like, episode. okay. First of all, I don't discern between media. I think all media is good. So if I was in your writing class, I would never have any critiques for everyone because I'm love like, that. I like to uplift everyone's voice. I do too. I give everything five stars. In <laughs> Wait, we're so akin. Wait, Bella I, Hadid drank. I really don't. Uh, I have no. I don't have the confidence to insult people. Right? And anytime <laughs> anybody makes anything, I'm like, wait, that's so hard to do. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats well, on your big achievement. I, just, yeah. I don't even know it even from an insulting way. I'm like, I just like even bad media. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's a people tried and I like it when people try. I, I think that's my big thing. Bad horror movies and <gasps> bad of like course. reality TV because it's that's like a really different thing, but like it is. It's so fun to watch stuff that like other people don't find good because some of the greatest movies are, you know, shat on. Technically absolutely. bad or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's perfect. Oh my God. Okay, well, let's dive into the episode. We do a minute to win it where we try to synopsize the entire episode in one minute. <laughs> okay. This is season five, episode two, Good Man. Ready, set, go. Okay, Hannah is sleeping at Fran's house and the crazy guy named Josh, I think, mm. is in is in the front room. And Hannah's like, can you stop being beta for one minute? And Fran's like, not really. And then Fran like moves in with Hannah and Elijah and they're kissing. And Fran's like, can you not? And then Hannah and Fran go to work. And then Hannah gets a call from her dad. Her dad's in the Marriott in Midtown crying. Uh-oh. Uh- Hannah's going <laughs> to go all the way to Midtown now from Brooklyn. And now she's running into her father who is weeping on the bed. But let's flash forward quickly to Jess and Adam as they're like, we can't actually continue this relationship. We can't touch. We can't look. But let's go to the carnival, LOL, um, where Jessica tries to get um, $30 from a, I hate to use this word, carny. No, that's a bad word. And Can you <laughs> get that? Bleep it? It's a mean it word. Is? Yeah, my dad used to say it all the time. My dad used to say it all the time growing up, but then. I heard what? it was really bad. I've never heard that. It's someone who works at a carnival. Wait, is it? Okay. okay. It's I'm like, I'm going to get the sorry. wrong <laughs> thing at the end of the episode. Correct no, me okay. if I'm wrong. No, yeah. okay, that's okay. our big thing here. I didn't. That's actually Okay, so they go to a carnival. They go to a carnival. They're like, uh, we can't touch. And then wait, they... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh f- and we can't touch. And then <laughs> they go back and fight. Is that when they fight? Okay, they have a massive fight and ruin an entire apartment. It's Adam's apartment, correct? Wait, what? Oh no, we're fast forwarding it. They don't fight. They're not like fighting. They're having. They're in conversation here. See, I'm gonna get it wrong. I think I I switched it up in my head. Wait, no, we what got happens? It from here. Oh, okay, they jerk off. Um, yes. that's what it is. Yeah, they jerk off. They jerk off next to each other, and then they don't do anything yet. And a goldfish yeah, exactly. dies. A goldfish dies. I don't remember that part. Um, no worries. It was small. Um, yeah, because Adam can't stop shaking it. Right. Okay, and then Elijah. Um, meets so that guy, I'll, the ball guy. Yeah, exactly. The bald, the guy. bald guy, the news reporter. So Elijah's called over to meet up with Tad and Hannah as they're kind of having 
um, a big breakdown and big fight. And she's like, I need gay support. And then Elijah comes <laughs> to town, but then sees the two of them crying. He's like, I'm actually going to go to a different bar in Midtown. And, and then, then he meets the friend, correct? Oh, no, he's bald. alone in a bar in the world's ugliest hoodie. And then the news reporter who's bald comes up and is like, hey, oh, how oh, are oh, you? Oh, yes, I know that. Part. Oh, my God. It's like Mr. Big. It's Mr. Yeah, Big it moment. literally is. He's having his carry moment. Oh, and then Helvetica enters know, exactly. the scene. And Ray is so stressed about this new coffee shop where um, Cyrus Dunham stars as the first non-binary person to ever be on television in a bad mood. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, I completely forgot that happened like the, he's stressed about the the like cool coffee shop yeah and everybody's stealing his lids <laughs> it's funny that they don't have lids at yeah. the other place. it's so random but it's funny I mean, you have a lid here today even we've kind of come all the way back around i know I'd be very upset if they didn't give me a lid i no. couldn't go on with my they also don't have Wi-Fi. If you watch closely, they're like, no Wi-Fi here. I'm like, what coffee shop doesn't have Wi-Fi? And a it's lot packed of them to the brim. in LA. Oh, really? They're like, this is a no laptop zone. Uh, so just eat your coffee. My cortisol and- just spiked. <laughs> I know. It's just like annoying. And That's uh, last weekend. I, was di- I needed to upload something to Dropbox for work. And I spent $16 buying a quad shot latte and a cookie <laughs> only to find out there was no Wi-Fi in the joint and had to go to a Barnes and Noble. Yeah, at least they put it in big letters here. I oh know. my God, LA sounds like hell. I keep t- I keep accidentally pressing a button. Is it changing? Oh, that me? one truly does nothing. Okay. And that was one minute. Oh my God, we ate we've that never summer. Done in a I, I couldn't have done worse. We probably <laughs> should be doing four minutes because we've know. never done it in a minute before. And these to give Lena Dunham, we're like, you only get a minute. It's like, she deserves so so much more than I that. know she needs more time she I needs know. so much more time mm-hmm. such an huge. iconic episode it's so a boy for it's like the boy episode of girls well, I was saying this it's a queer episode of girls oh absolutely I love oh that scene with the dad and Elijah it's just such a like sweet but weird and yeah. like special moment so many weird things happen that in that episode I completely I can't even gather it's- it well, because there's, I mean, we'll get into it. But well, let's first ask you an amazing question, and then oh we'll get again to Lisa Mans. Okay, girl, what, what girl, girl are you? Are you? Um, <laughs> I actually thought about this last night because I knew you would ask me. <laughs> I think I'm like a mix between maybe Hannah and Jessa. Is that absolutely, okay? absolutely that. That's exactly what I, I pictured. I, or I was at one point. I was like, I'm Marnie. Absolutely, really. Yeah. And and then I was like, wait, no, I'm not being. A, I just thought about it. Too yeah, much. it's a hard question. It I is. I have to mix them. Do I have to say one or can no, I no, mix? No, you can mix. You want. Jessa and Hannah. And I think. why? Because writer and cool outfits. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, let's see. I I feel like I. I relate with like Jess's attitude on some things, not mm. the like horrible stuff. I would never do what she did. No. To him. <laughs> <laughs> that was something that horrifies me to my very core. But like her, I don't know. There's maybe I just like to think I'm Jessa. Right. I will say when you said Marnie and then you turned your head a little bit and I saw your bun, I was like, she's not a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's like parts of me that think that that would have been me if a lot of her decisions, I kind of, you know, feel like I would fuck up on those too. Yeah. But Hannah, I just love, I just watched the other day because I was I'm going through a breakup I I watched the episode where she locks herself in the bedroom oh Mimi, and she's like I'm staying here for the rest of my life oh Mimi my god Mimi Rose whatever Mimi Rose Howard MRH is there and I just think oh that episode is so good and it so just good. like heals me it heals did it heal, heal you? It healed me. I went through a breakup the same week that we reviewed that episode on his podcast. Oh, ouch. So I'm like, I know I know what you're talking about in the sense where it's, it is, can be closure in some sense, but also it hurt me because I was like, oh, and none of my friends would be there. Not, my friends were there in that way, but exactly. it's like, oh, my friends when did Jessa, that. Oh, it hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. I guess they kind of did suck at comforting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Hannah was a little too nice to Jessa when Jessa was like, I, I said her, I'm like, Hannah, you're allowed to be really mad. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it, she did hit her i guess that i, <laughs> I guess think like, i guess she did slap her that is true. i would have i don't even know what i would have done i would have oh are you good at comforting people when they're sad i actually 
I would well, turn can to you. say I I am. I my friends are like call call me mom because Aww. I'm very uh, that's like I'm always the therapist friend because I I like you know I'm always happy because that's what I would want is somebody to like listen to me yeah. pray and stuff especially like uh, a lot of my friends like had breakups this year weirdly i feel like this oh my god the your friend group's just Wait, going it's a breakup through. year thank it, you for saying that <laughs> it, it, no it is i weirdly like everyone i know just like fell apart so it's been a big we're even, like having group therapy at this point but i i do i love comforting my friend i would never do any of that i would be so angry for my friend if yeah. somebody did that yeah oh my god like me and my friends were like imagine if i did this with your and we were like the world would explode <laughs> how can you even fathom trying to do that i don't know What's, no no there's you know no excuse that came through yeah absolutely i know because you know what it is it's like they all made the breakup kind of about them and it's like I when know. you're going through when you're trying to comfort someone you absolutely can't involve yourself at all you're just like put your head here put your tears here I know. and just like i'll be there i hate when people are like well that happened to you let me tell you about a time that yes. something even worse right happened. and you're like actually no <laughs> that, doesn't, right that doesn't make me feel better no That's no it's so class yeah. Awesome. Oh, oh, oh. So I'd well, say yes. Amelia, I have a question for you. What? Do you want to ask me? I think we're gonna ask her a girl. What girl are you? Okay, okay. Ready? Yes. Girl, girl what, what girl, girl are, are you? you? Oh my god, y'all should know. <laughs> um, I think I'm actually Hannah this episode, just because she is like having to take care of the boys in her life. Mm. Like she's like begging her boyfriend to go like save her from being murdered. And then she's like, Dad, you're afraid to go knock on the door. Like, I'm so like I'm knocking on that man's door, being like, give me the wallet. Oh my God, <laughs> give me the is, damn wallet that sir is, <laughs> that is really funny yeah you really if i was in a pinch um i would get, ask amelia to get the wallet from a man i've never talked to or like could, really had a real conversation and with i have before. to say like i would be exhilarated by having to go knock on a Red random too. and be like and the way her dad describes it like he's just crying and he's like the couch was purple the dog was big and hannah's <laughs> like let me get in there it's like the sweetest old man the tiniest dog i know it is Sweet. Uh, Wait, the dog's name is Mojito in real life. It's a little toy poodle, and then it has a sister named Pina Colada, and they came one big so box. Cute. Oh my god, you studied the work. Mm -hmm. Are they actors? They're like, I guess they're actor dogs that come in boxes. Oh, that's, that's named sad. after um, tropical cocktails. That's huh. a great idea. I'd say yeah. Yeah, I'd say yes into that. <laughs> All right, Evan, girl, which what girl oh, are you? God. Um. I'm a, I'm not gonna be a girl here because I'm so I felt so Elijah akin in this episode or uh, wanting to manifest whatever Elijah had going forward because I would love to um see my friends be in emotional distress and then keep on walking go to a bar and then find um someone who's better than me in every single way mm -hmm. I think that could actually be huge for me yeah. I'm crying with my father at a restaurant yeah. you're seeing it you're walking to the bar next door and falling in love with a rich man <laughs> exactly oh, that character I know but I actually do also think I'm Tad in a little bit of ways <laughs> <laughs> say more because totally. um, I'm like if, sometimes when I enter people's house for hookup I can exaggerate details and I'm really good if anything traumatic happens to me by taking the smallest details and expanding them into one of the biggest um, stories ever told uh -huh. in a way that's like that was unnecessarily and uncalled for. But yeah, it's an amazing way to tell a story. So like, yes, there's a giant purple couch. Yes, there was a giant dog who was trying to kill me. And um, I lost my wallet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys share a storytelling bone. <laughs> yeah, we share a storytelling bone. And it's kind of beautiful. I love it. Well, we're going to cut to our first break. But when we get back, we're going to lean into Lena. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my God, God. And we're back. This is a crazy break. <laughs> <laughs> this is so long. <laughs> Great rest. Oh, my God. Thank you, State Farm. It's always State Farm that plays between the breaks. I know. State Can you Farm. imagine? I'm like, is this bad for society? No. I mean, do we know anyone with State Farm? I personally don't think they do. No, I know. Not personally. No. It I is don't. for people that don't live in coastal. I guess anyone could have State Farm, and I don't actually mean to be prejudiced towards it. You're I actually upsetting all the State Farm <laughs> I actually think a lot of people are going to comment about being a part they, of the State Farm might. community. L O L. I'm okay. laughing my little ass off. Let's lean into Lena. I think we have to start with the most important thing. Wait, I'm curious to think what you think the most important thing is because mine's Jessa be and Adam. Okay, so mine's different, but I'm happy and I appreciate your opinion. 
Okay, you already said you cannot believe they're getting together. It's it's breaking the rules of girl code. It's breaking every rule. I'm very upset. I, I just, like, in a way, I get that there's this connection and there's this tension. Like, I kind of get that. But it's just so classic Jessa, and it just mm. feels so disappointing that Adam is such, like, a... Pussy. It like, sucks. Just, I'm just like, what's wrong with you? It just feels like I'm literally fisting my, or I'm clenching my fist right now. I'm so, it just is so mind boggling to me. But yeah, I hate them in this moment. Yeah. No, I hate them in this moment. And I, it is written where it's like supposed to be ambiguous. Like Jess is trying her best. She's like, we can't. I don't want to do this. I'm not that type of girl. I've been a bad friend. I need to be a good one. And then it's still like we see her like slip. But it is like Adam is being so pushy. It's so, I don't know. So I, push forward. I just feel like, yeah, I guess in a way she is trying to do the thing, good thing. That's why I'm like, I understand that there's like, like chemistry and that would make things hard. But I'm like, I can't put myself in the shoes of a person who would do that. And Adam just, he just like does the most cruel things. And, and like, he no. does it so like without even guess, thinking about it for one minute. Like it has well, not crossed his motive. mind like this is wrong. Yeah. It's so, like it's just, it's like Jessa thinks this is wrong. How do I get her to well, not think I'm that? I'm also like, what do men want always? It's a thing they can't have. So it's like Jessa is the thing he can have the most as well because it's like, it's so off limit because it's Hannah's best friend. And it, it's like, it's also the world's hottest woman. So it's like, Okay, yeah, of course he's going to go cuckoo crazy for that girl and do whatever he can to be with her. Yeah, I, I just can't, I can't understand. He just kind of treats women like shit. Like, yeah. Just only, oh my God, only. you and Amelia are on so many pages together. I, I'm just not happy with his behavior a lot of the time. There's like, he has such like a vulnerability and like a sweetness in his eyes that you always want to, or like the, the episode, is that finale of season two or three where he runs to and her. saves her yeah that's like every you know mentally ill girl's <laughs> fantasy yeah really like i i can't even imagine that <laughs> sounds great <laughs> yeah but then every moment after that i le like i just Maybe that's just me with his character. I just I'm no. Finally, someone said it. I someone, spend, I spend every week it. being like, Adam is mostly bad, y'all, and everybody's like, but he's so hot. Well, I'm like, I think a big problem with a lot of male characters in this show, it's like they are all addicted to grand gestures, but never being there for the everyday moments. Like they're so yeah. addicted to like breaking down a door and being there for you. Or like look at Desi and Marnie where he's like, I'm going to build a wall in our apartment. I'm going to get married to you and get engaged to you in the craziest way possible. And it's like, they love these big moments. They love those romantic things. But then when it's like, hey, can you peel the orange? They're not going to peel the orange. Yeah, that is so true. I completely also like have experienced that where it's like <laughs> you think if you do this like great thing once or twice or, yeah. you know, maybe once every few months, it will save you for yeah. months later and make you look good. And that's what I feel like all the, the guys do. In no, it's show. so true. And then they I mean, they don't get away with it really until, I mean, inevitably they don't get away with it. Yeah, that is true. I do have a big issue with a lot of this sequence because A, they're going to Coney Island to go to the carnival where Which... just has to get $30 back. And then they end up in the West Village. And I've never been to LA. I don't understand a lot about it. But I do know there's, there's this one trope where you're like, you can go skiing and to the beach in the same day. But it's like, you can do that in the New York. You can go to Coney Island and to West Village in the same day. But you would never do that. Yeah. Like, you would never go skiing and to beach in the same day. So I'm like, that is this hell to watch. <laughs> this does not make sense. It does sense. not make sense. It doesn't. I do. You have a little hair on your nose. And, and that's for... Thank you. <laughs> of it's a continuity error. Yeah. Now it, they're going to be like, where did the hair go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> um, that is true. That is something somebody in LA would say. Whoever says that in LA is annoying, though. I'm like, why do you want to do both of those? Yeah. I'm like, well, what if, you, what if you split up your days, girl? <laughs> it's very, but yeah, I know. I, I feel like I'm having it. I don't know. That is that is a. They're always ending up in like Coney Island on the trip. Isn't that You're where? You're so she, right. They're always <laughs> yeah, ending up Hannah in Coney goes there Island. with cake when she loses all her belongings oh, I that love one night. That episode. The end of yeah, season that, one. Uh, I miss the past. Uh, 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 the cinematography in season one was different. I, I think, know, and it was so pretty. Well, you like Sex in the City. It's a kind of a similar concept to that. I like. Yeah. 
it's sex in the city the way they shot the first season it's like so like crazy crazy it's, and they have like the breaking the fourth wall of the time it's so different from the rest of the yeah show. i know they love to do that with girls on hbo they love to do the first season so different from the rest i know they're trying to feel it out and see what will what will work yeah <laughs> I've, i'm i'm trying to think what else i have to say i i need more like well hmm. okay we history aside like Ooh. let's say hannah and adam were never together we just know jess and adam they met in AA for the first time are they perfect for each other mm. that's Ooh. the problem is that's why i keep saying there's like a connection and chemistry between them yeah but i'm like yeah maybe but when you it's just the i don't know you can't do that you it, can't it does do but it, it does it does kind of make sense why they'd be together. It yeah. makes sense. destroy each other, but in a different way than Hannah and Adam would destroy Literally. each other. <laughs> like it's yeah. a little more Whoa. like, you know, I feel like, isn't that the one rule in AA is you can't date someone else in AA or is that not I, a thing? I don't know. That um, seems true. But or maybe I, that's just support anything is groups. Gos- gospel. The, yeah. In support groups, you're not allowed to be. And like yeah. any group therapy, you're not allowed to do that. So I've always thought like you shouldn't do that in AA either. And yeah. People there for romantic reasons. But yeah, maybe they kind of were perfect for each other, but in a more toxic way and more like lust, not love. I know. Yeah. I'm sure those groups are hard because for a lot of people, being vulnerable is one of the most sexual things you can do. I know. So if I had to be in group therapy and or an anonymous group for support, and people are being vulnerable around me. I'm like, I'm in love with every single person in this room. Yeah. That is such a big kink of mine. Yeah, no, if somebody is like being emotionally supportive and understanding like, and you're yes. like admitting all your secrets, you're going to have some weird attachment to of them. Of course. But it's funny to me because I feel like Adam and Jessa didn't ever seem like, it never felt like that was going to happen yeah. in the previous seasons and stuff. Like that's why it bugged me so much is like, it almost, which is not true, but it almost would have been better if they like all this, you know, met and had these feelings for each other. It just felt so sudden and yeah. like. Gross. I know it did feel so sudden. And it just was like. We're just, running out of plot points. Yeah. I no, know. I'm sorry. Your dad's amazing at everything. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. We're not mad. <laughs> I know. I don't know. Did he write this episode? I don't think I don't so. I don't think so. Okay. That's good. So I'm not commenting on anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to say the wrong thing. But, but I okay, will. I think we have to dive into Tad's whole deal. Yes, okay, I've been waiting a lifetime to talk about Tad's whole deal. All right, dive in, Evan. Where do I begin? Oh my God, I'm so excited. Um, Oh my God, so Tad is currently flying from Michigan to New York to hook up with a guy that he met on gay.com because gay he was looking for porn, but he actually just ended up on a gay dating website and he meets someone. Um. And then he's calling Hannah in a panic, um, being like, hey, can you come to this Marriott in Times Square? I left my wallet in the hookup's apartment. And then he tells a scary tale. Oh, my God. Being gay can be scary at any age, even 56, which I assume he Absolutely. is. Um, I'm like, but and it's like, it's so interesting to see. It's like, I think those questions when you like watch uh, something I've always noticed as like a, I came out at 17. So mm-hmm. like that's somewhere middle of the road. But to watch people, my counterparts come out later, it's like no one's having a different experience. Yeah. Everyone is like so scared out of their mind, never being confident with it. And it's like it shows that like even if you build maturity, the shame that comes around being gay is like it doesn't dissipate with age. The thing that dissipates with age is being honest to yourself. Yeah. And like the more you can do that, the more it's just easier to assume. And it's like watching Eliza like being having to be like this cultural counterpart for Tad as he like gets into his gay hood mm-hmm. I and mean, it's like even he's the younger counterpart is still so interesting to see and now hannah has to do the same thing for tad because he's going through this really emotionally vulnerable time um so now it's like seeing all these younger people who are like more awoken into culture having to like mentor this older person who's just coming in yeah. terms of their gayness it's so it's very sad. interesting it feels very sa- like sad in the beginning like he's so vulnerable and yeah like exposed he's and like truly in the fetal position almost i know <laughs> it's so sad but sweet in a way like seeing his it was it his high school like somebody he knew 
before the one he later yeah, on. Yeah, he connected with someone from his high school earlier, but this is someone he just met on a website called gay.com. Yeah, which is I know so that. Was, but he went and he had a romance before he, with his. He was reconnecting with the guy he dry humped with in college. Yeah, that's yeah. what I remember <laughs> from the, that episode. That is so, yeah, he's such a sweet. And imagine, yeah, having your first like kind of random hook up and you've never done uh, and being married for however long yeah. 30 years is just it is really sweet and how he, they have to mentor him is it poetic yeah. it's in hell's kitchen now it is yeah it's like it is beautiful it's in hell's it is like yeah. you can come out at any beautiful. age and you're gonna be crying in midtown manhattan <laughs> <laughs> that's really just the life that's, we lead it's inevitable all roads lead to tears yeah <laughs> It's so um interesting how Hannah like navigates trying to be there for her father while being like I don't want to do this. I know it is such a bizarre thing to have your dad come out and you be you being like my whole life was or my parents' marriage was kind of I know. Oh yeah, sham. And then having to also see how much pain it's causing him to like break out of that. Yeah. And having to be it's it's special that she can even have. I mean, I I don't I would yeah, be really confused and it would be hard to like yeah, initially course. understand, but yeah. of course She's being, a good She's being a good daughter, even though her mom, her mom calling her being like, tell your dad I want a divorce. I'm like, oh, my God, the parents <gasps> have lost the plot. Cigarette. That's the best part. And like blonde <laughs> hair. I'm like, OK, she dyed her hair. She's smoking cigs in the kitchen. Like she is done. She's done with him. It's so funny because when gay people go through a hard time, the trope is that they dye their hair blonde. But it's funny that she did that she, too. She did it for Tat. <laughs> she, she took it. She is just the most incredible actress. Becky Ann Baker. It's She's like unreal. I just names. everything she Yeah. They are three beautiful names. <laughs> I I just think ev everything she does in that show like makes it have so much of a heart and like you it, just seeing her dynamic with her parents is like a big reason I love I know. it. Yeah. It's well, like Did you I, watch it inside Lena? In oh, the behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Lena was saying that like during the time they filmed this episode, her dad's um, brother had just died. So she was like going through like helping her father th through like grief for the first time. So she was like, this is the first time like something in the show and something in my life are paralleled so intrinsically. I'm sure that was like really confusing episode to to film then yeah very yeah. emotional because she's so great in that episode too she's yeah so, well it, it's very i mean it's, i don't know a lot about acting but i'm like you really do draw from personal experience in acting and it's it's very interesting for her to have this really visceral thing happening in her life and then it's playing out kind of in a similar pattern in the show and the ending shot of this whole episode where she's like her dad's like i don't know what to do and hannah's like i'll be there for you and then she looks away I was like tearful. Whatever. Hannah's just having to be this emotionally <laughs> reserved. She's having to be like strong for her to even know she's losing her father in some capacity. Beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I love their relationship. <laughs> it's so it's so cool how much chemistry and how Lena is able to build like such real relationships with the people in the show, which is so impressive and and to be so connected and like I don't know. I've always been very impressed by her acting. Yeah. Because it's impressive. <laughs> and I know, I know, like, that Adam probably be working with him, especially in the beginning, like, they were just something about the two of them. Like, they just made each other better. Yeah. yeah. There's, like, something really cool about that because he came in and he really brought, like, such an interesting thing to throw. Obviously, it, like, you know, he Literally. went on to do. Star Wars. Yeah, so he's, <laughs> he's in Star Wars now, so it's like... I'm like, that's the only thing. Just Star Wars. <laughs> marriage Star Story Wars. on Netflix. <laughs> Love Marriage Story. I really liked White Noise. I, really, I He's great. He's wonderful. Was he's he great. English in something recently? He was he was in the Ferrari movie. Ooh, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm thinking House of Gucci, but also he did Ferrar. Oh, oh, House yeah. of Gucci. Or, sorry, House of Gucci. What Not you, you name it. What did you Evan call Evan just it? named um, an open mic in Brooklyn. <laughs> what did you, what did you <laughs> it's say? It's called House of Gucci because it's an acronym <laughs> of all their names. <laughs> Gucci. That is what it was called. That's what they wanted to be called originally. House of Gucci. House of Gucci. Um, 
Wait, what is the oh the last thing we have to cover? What kind of or there's two things. I think Ray and other coffee shop is such a fun thing to talk about because mm-hmm. it's like the gentrifier being gentrified. Yeah, really beautiful parallel going on. <laughs> the gentrifier being gentrified. <laughs> it Wait, is. And Cyrus is plays the barista in the mm-hmm. other one. Oh my god. Cyrus killed it. They came in with their amazing eyebrows and incredible eyebrows. Yeah, and they were like, "I'm gonna be evil towards Ray," and we're like, "This is epic." Not, this is so random, but I feel like there's always one sibling with the better eyebrows. <gasps> Not saying Lena doesn't Ooh. have good eyebrows, but my sister has incredible eyebrows, like so full. Mine don't exist. I have to draw them on. It's so not I, right. So I, I see there's that. Well, you get to be creative in a way your sister doesn't. And that's exactly. in some ways I do better. bleach them sometimes. Oh, really? Really? It's not cute. Though. No, that's <laughs> chic. That's like what the kids are doing. I, I know. I tried to fit in. <laughs> I went back. I, I was shamed out. My mom was like, what's happening? Are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> no, not at She's all. She's like, do you need help, sweetie? <laughs> She's like, your forehead looks bigger. Oh, today. my God. <laughs> Wait, do you? remember um ma being in girls i do oh my god yeah she she with her snake print pants and oh my god she, she she's so great in that episode with the, she the piercing is, yeah she's so good what is that piercing called the tabula i don't know but it's it she top. is making me stressed out watching that episode i'm like this hurts <laughs> she's i know it's so <laughs> panicking to watch her get that but i was in so impressed because she was in i think like 11th grade and like everybody, it was very cool that she did that. Everybody right. Everybody in our school. Because I was in middle school when she did that. And to we be like, showing up to sixth grade, like my sister like did a thing. My sister <laughs> is the lead in the musicals and she's actually on an HBO series now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really, really cool that she did that. And I think she was so great and it's so impressive that she like held her own on that. Oh, she, type yeah. of, she didn't and hold I'm her like, own. She killed she killed it i the mean the way she delivered all those mean things to oh hannah my God. so funny she's she's mod is hilarious i get all my humor from her so that was that was exciting especially because i didn't care back then but now i do right <laughs> i watched i watched when i first watched it i, was, I felt very very proud of her because it was, is cool that she played high school and then is still playing high school 10 years i'm like yeah. that girl is timeless i know good i that's that's the dream to play a <laughs> to get the young parts no, for as literally. long as you can yeah I was like, should i start lying about my age now <laughs> yeah maybe that would help things. i'm sure it's not well documented i know i'm like <laughs> wikipedia can be changed <laughs> um but no yeah it is it's impressive hopefully I don't I don't know how long that lot li- they all like the euphoria because they're not yeah it's only they're 30 yeah it also is like beautiful. with the covid and the strikes I'm like season three it's like 10 I years know. later it's 10 years it's I know but years I will say future. Lena they really casted high schoolers and middle schoolers for um girls in a way they would never do for any other tv show like that girl in this in this episode where she's drinking her starbucks mm-hmm. drink and being like i don't think we should be talking about sex and she's and hannah's like we should be talking about how <laughs> jewish men could be really bravado and funny at the same time <laughs> <laughs> is bravado a word or the is it just a name of the, the company and her classrooms are so funny like that whole span of time with fran too. it's so wild it's are so you wild. loving fran and hannah's relationship what do you think I don't like Fran. No. <laughs> it's like, what don't. is his like, deal? I like that he's like, he's like that. I mean, he's not even very sweet. Like, he's kind of a dick. He's but, kind of a dick, but, but in a coded he, way. Yeah, he's like that that boyfriend you have that's like fine and Good and you're paper. like, oh, he's a nice guy, and he's it's like, like he's okay, a really sweet guy, <laughs> and, and but you don't like him at all in any real way. But not that that's like a normal thing. But it's sometimes It's happens. kind of a classic trope that's happening to every girl I know. Yeah, it happened to me in like high school so many times. I was like, this is he's he's too sweet. And, right. and then then the asshole part comes out because because they're they're fed up with you, you know, walking all over them. Yeah. That's what I feel like he's kinda like I know she did show her vagina we're, we're, to the principal. Though. They no, and <laughs> it all it all happens that way. I love that scene where they walk into the crazy room and he's like, "I'm working on a project." Sorry, don't want to use the word crazy. Um, <laughs> guy going through a lot, 
um <laughs> mapping out his body in the living room first off there's a lot with that scene because she's like fran wake up we're going through a break uh, we're going through uh someone's breaking into the apartment but like in new york city all we hear is crashing sounds all day so there's no way to discern if someone's breaking into your apartment or someone's doing an arts and crafts project in the family room like there's absolutely right. no way and then he's like i'm doing a project and he's like i'm mapping out my body but if you look in the background there's 400 cans stacked up I'm like how is the project you mapping out your body when there's literally a whole costco in the back a, yeah. whole a whole Costco in the back. And that didn't fall down. And that, I know. <laughs> that should have been the thing to I'm make like, this He bought out. it from Booth Jonathan and put an art <laughs> installation in there. Oh my God. I bet him and Booth Jonathan do hang out. I'm sure. Booth okay, we have to dive into our next segment. Oh, yeah. Girl, Girl get, get your, your Glock. Glock. It's, it's rapid, rapid fire time. time. Okay. We're going to ask you some questions really quick. Just answer the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. I'm scared. What is your favorite utensil? Uh, a fork. Why is Marnie mad at you? Marnie's mad at me because I uh, held hands with Desi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you? The I vo- wrote a song with him. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be pissed. Are you the voice of your generation or a voice of a generation? Um, I think I'm a voice of a generation. <laughs> not not mine for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather live in a gorgeous building facing an ugly building or an ugly building facing a nice building? An ugly building facing wait, it's facing I'm a nice s- building or sorry, the- it's a they're both gorgeous. I say gorgeous and nice. Okay, wait. I'll reread it. Re-read Would you it. rather live in a gorgeous building facing an ugly building or an ugly building facing a gorgeous building? A gorgeous building. Uh... A gorgeous building facing an ugly one. I feel like yeah, that's the correct answer. Yeah, <laughs> I feel. Yeah. Are you kissing your gay friend? Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Helvetica or Rays? Um, Helvetica. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you at the Marriott in Times Square? Always. Yeah. How many times a month do you lose your wallet? I actually lost my license two days ago. Oh my God. <laughs> so a lot. This is the second time I've lost in the past five months. So if that really? gives you any reference of how. Do you have Apple Tag? I now do. My dad made me get one on my, my passport and uh, keys. And oh, that's smart. Life. My parents did the same and thing. And I still lost it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, what's your favorite font? Um, shit. Uh, I don't remember the other one, so Times New Roman. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's literally history. Papyrus. What would you name your goldfish? Um, I named my goldfish Cat. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Um, if you saw your bestie and her dad crying in a restaurant, would you go in or keep walking? I would... <laughs> That's really funny. I'd probably keep walking. <laughs> I would just be like, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, it would be so sh- I feel like I would... I would walk past and then I'd be like, no, I should go. Yeah, in. there'd be a lot of thoughts within that one crossing. Yeah. <laughs> and then you finally turn. Like, how good's the restaurant? Is there hummus involved? Because if there's hummus, then I can say. I'm, yeah, me too. I love, I love hummus. I love it. Okay, we have our last, last segment. segment. That, that outfit in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That's when we care. Brooklyn then versus Brooklyn now. Okay. So it's kind of just like, what are the big cultural touch points from. Um, that episode that you wouldn't think it sticks in today's reality or like are now something different in the outfits it can be yeah. outfit i think a really good example is the girl with the starbucks cup in class yeah where it's like um now for, it'd be a stanley cup it, it would, yeah, be, a it would stanley be a stanley cup. cup wait so am i saying what it would be now yeah so just like okay when you're watching this show you're like is are you noticing something so 2010s about it that you're like oh nowadays it Always. wouldn't be like just that. like a lot of like strong pattern shorts yeah. yeah like very strong pattern shorts and just like constant power clashes like and it's kind of sick like yeah, I, no, okay. I applaud your boldness are you wearing jorts are you wearing really long shorts yeah sorry no no i love we're Copper forward bed. here we're forward capri in this household not that long though i feel like our belts back i bought i just bought a belt i think they are they're back i think they're cute depending how you wear them not the loose ones though i like like a <laughs> wait, like an actual wait. like people just wear like a belt that just like kind of like 
drapes no over toy. your waist. I'm Wait, like, that's Evan's whole thing right now. Um, but that's oh, okay. No, that's no, no. Today's cute. tight. Thank Today's you. tight. So, How? So I'll do two belts. One's loose. One's tight. Yeah, you. I'm. I mean, no, no hate. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hypocrite. Don't get me wrong. But no, I. No, you can hate. It's I'm, actually okay. I'm just going through. Uh, I have. I have all these new fashion. You're utilitarian ideas. forward. I'm. Yeah. Continue. Continue. I feel um, bad. No. No, 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 no. Lids I, are still in. Lids are so in. Actually, they weren't in, but now they're coming, coming back around. It is crazy in. that this whole lid conversation happens when it's like we didn't know it was coming with straws. Yeah. With straw culture. Oh, that's a really amazing Straw part culture. Of yeah, that was. That was intense for a while. And then they gave up. Seems and then like, they literally were like, kill the turtles. They were like, never kill mind. We're too lazy to make these paper straws. Yeah. Well, have you ever put a paper straw into something sparkling before? Yeah, it's horrible. It, it somehow reacts with the sparkling agent in there. And then it comes shooting out a straw, like Old Faithful style. It's really, really gross. Old I mean, Faithful style. It, it, like tastes, a geyser. it tastes different, too. I know. It's like White Claw already tastes like gasoline. So now to add another chemical into that, that makes it even more <laughs> gasoline-esque. I is, like that uh, White Claw is what you were <laughs> referencing. <laughs> I love putting a paper straw in a White Claw. That is so... Do you put them in your cells? Um, no, I just kind of mouth to lid. Yeah. yeah. Mouth the lid. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, wait, Cheesecake Factory lives on. Oh, yeah. They In this episode, they're naming like a bunch of... Oh, I love. At Helvetica, they're naming a bunch of like um, conglomerate businesses. Because <laughs> Ray's, there's only one other Ray's. And he's like, I'm a small business. And they're like, no, you're just like Applebee's and you're just like the Cheesecake Factory. And I'm like, okay, Applebee's and the Cheesecake Factory are still going strong. I know. I have a big point off of this, though, because the guy wasn't fully wrong. He's just a fortune teller. Because what is happening here is Grumpy's Cafe used to only have one or two locations. Like, Ray's is supposed to be the next location of grumpy's but they just mm-hmm. called it ray's after ray but now if you look around grumpy in the city it's actually an, if it's at the airport then it's a chain location because they have a grumpy's yes. now in LaGuardia, and it's like no actually you were telling the truth it is now a chain it is he yeah. wasn't wrong for a single second but are you guys getting coffee from like mom and pop like i am going to conglomerates I, no, no, no. You're good, girl. I'm. I go to this place not all the time. I go to. I guess. I, I mean, do, have you been to Cafe Kitsune? No. Yes. That's, there's a it's place. In Soho. It's not a mom and pop shop. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad, but I do go. There's a lot of great places next to me that I do go to, but I only drink tea, so I'm not super picky. No, but you can right, go anywhere. Like you go to Pratt. Big, you know, coffee. Uh, shop chains make kind of worse tea specifically i, I actually why. really believe that and so i'm just like i would rather just go to random places that aren't like ten dollars for a tea which is well crazy. they always use tazo at the big places it's like no buy something local make it make it make it make, it. make it. i used to work in a coffee shop and i would make these massive like <laughs> Jokes of tea. I'm like, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Get your shit together. You're like banging your fist oh at the shop. God. I know, I know. It's perfect. I well, think the big thing though for mm-hmm. compar- cultural comparison here what? is um, non-binariness and all of this. Because mm-hmm. oh, first yeah. off, they refer to uh, Cyrus's character as gender neutral. Mm-hmm. It's like predated non-binary as a term, yeah. and then they use it. Um, but I love Ray's whole thing. It's like Ray today would know that's a non-binary person because there's only yeah. two appropriate as a non-binary person. There's only two appropriate haircuts for a non-binary person, which is a shaved head or colored hair. <laughs> um, so it's Cyrus really, did the work. Cyrus <laughs> did the work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of course, like that, you know that's coming. Um, and I feel like that cafe would have to have Wi-Fi today. Oh, it would absolutely have to. Yeah, yeah. or maybe Though. not. The place I go doesn't have Wi-Fi in New York. Are you just? Really soaking going? up the every day. Say, I literally, I'm like, okay, I'll read. I guess. Whoa. Whoa! But they forced me to read, right. which is kind of a good. Thing. Honestly, <laughs> I'm good for them. Good yeah. for them. No, yeah. Oh. All right, Iris. This was a perfect this was episode. Kind of it was so much fun. This Thanks so you. Fun. Fun. Wait, do you have anything fun or exciting coming up that you can dish about? I, I, I mean, I, I'm, tr- I don't, I don't know. Nothing exciting. I've, you know been trying to work and then working earlier this month so yeah i mean i hopefully have you made a short in your uh university class i made i made like six shorts over the course (gasps) of the last the two years i was solidly there and uh 
they were all very fun. Wait, can we get them on Vimeo? <laughs> I literally, that, that's like Bachmail. Yeah, I can't have anybody seeing. No, we okay, need on no. Vimeo. I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> think about it. Um, everybody go rewatch Love on Netflix. <laughs> oh my God, Thank we you love, guys love. for having me. Yeah, Thank you so for much for coming. So much fun. This is the most fun day of my whole life. I love that I'm just behind a bunch of pictures of girls. This you can take so one. Just yeah. No, I would <laughs> never. <laughs> All right, we'll be back next week. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.